Hey everybody, welcome back to After Painting. So, I think this week I have decided I'm going to go back to the old format for the show, which is basically I'm going to allow you guys to kind of start and finish uh, some projects with me. We're heading into the weekend, the last week in February, and I'm kind of hanging around. I don't really have money to travel or go out of town. So I figured I'd pull some stuff out of the uh, shed. The weather broke a little and maybe start uh, fixing it up. So what you're looking at here is a toy set which I came upon some time ago. I mean probably five or six years ago. And it's kind of languished in my box. Uh, I've never done anything with it. And so I've decided this weekend that I am going to try to get this painted and uh, dry brushed up and just see what it would look like as an actual piece on my gaming table. Now obviously this is an Egyptian themed set so we kind of have this this large wall and then this kind of temple structure. We have this area here which comes off uh, there's uh there's room in there I'm, i've kind of got this taped off because i don't want to spray paint in there because i'm gonna do that separately one of the cool things about it are these here kind of these hidden traps i mean i'm not sure they don't really have any effect for a miniature game but uh they might you might could mix some things up and hide them in there guys have to search them and you know maybe there's a random snake or something that comes out or a trap so the goal this weekend is going to be to get this primed you know and then eventually get it, it painted and just kind of see what it looks like so if you guys are at all interested in that hang around welcome to after painting so what does one do when one has finished painting the great majority of their never-ending horde of unpainted lead board gaming miniatures. I don't know. So that's what we're going to find out in this show. Uh, so stay with me. Uh, leave your comments, suggestions, and concerns. And let's go and see what life is like after painting. So what do we have here? And I know a lot of you might be saying, it looks like you've lost it, Dino. There's a box with what looks to be a miniature standing in the middle of it. And if you say that, then you are incorrect. What you are actually looking at here is my library. The library I spoke to you guys about in probably the first or second after painting that is going to resemble the library from the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I've got my uh, librarian in there or my master master librarian to kind of give me some scale. But I decided to get a start on the project and the first phase is finding this box because I needed something that would definitely be rectangular, that would have enough length so that it, you know, it would give me a good game, but I could also, you know, put it away. I didn't want it to be too bad. Uh, and that was going to be sturdy enough. And so I settled on this box. I will probably be removing the top among of many of the other modifications that are going to make. But hopefully when we are done with this, we will see at least the beginnings of the library. Now, as far as the details and accessories. Uh, we will revisit those in another uh, after painting. But for this episode, I'm going to show you guys uh, kind of my initial thoughts on the build out for this. All right, so back to the show. Hey, everybody. So for this segment, I'm going to do something I don't really do often, which is actually paint on camera. Because I know too many people do it and it's like, well, you know, I don't I don't think there's much I can add. But while we're waiting on those uh, Egyptian buildings to dry after having primed them, I am going to paint up some uh, Warlord Games Australians. And these were, uh, this is an Australian 25 pounder crew. 
So you can see they've already been uh, primed in black. And I will show you why I like to prime in black in a minute. So I don't have the 25 pounder here. This is going to be the base. But I'm just going to paint these up. And I'm just going to kind of show you guys how I do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you the paints. We're going to use a flesh from GW. We are going to use a kind of a World War II beige from Model Color. We will use a, we're going to use a Russian uniform World War II green. And finally, we are going to use a flat earth brown. And this is going to be a very basic paint job, but just to kind of show you how I paint pretty quickly. I have a, uh, a little wet palette here that I've done up real quickly because I do like to use wet palettes. Uh, I've got a little piece of napkin that I will be using to clean my brush. So the first thing I'm going to do is get out the, uh, is get out some of this, uh, flesh color. And you don't need much of it. Once you kind of thin it down, it's good. And I don't thin my paints as much as other people, but the, the GW stuff is a little thick. So we're going to just do that like this. And for this coat, since this is just the first one, you just kind of want to touch it. And we're just going to go over this as quickly as I can. So we can get to the next part and we're going to get in the face and everything. So if you can see what we're doing there. And the main thing I try to show when I, the rare times I do paint is how to, how to keep moving, how to be quick. So right now I've got paint just about on all his fleshy areas. You know, it's not even. But I could sit here moving that around for another five minutes or so and not get arguably better results. So we're going to put him down. We're going to pick up the next guy. I almost always paint more than one thing at a time. I will almost never just have one item that I'm painting. Even if it's something I'm, I'm trying to really work on, I will still have some, uh, I will still try to have some items that aren't that hard, whether it's terrain that I can just pick up and throw something on, whether it's because I have that color out or whether it's because uh, it's just easy and I want to knock it out at the same time while I'm waiting on the other item to dry or uh, making up my mind what colors I'm going to use. As far as the colors on this, I already took a peek online to see what colors uh, World or Games had went with, and so that's what I'm going to go with. That's kind of how I picked my colors, so I tried to get close to theirs. All right, so we got this guy's got his his kind of flesh on, and that's the thing I like about these dudes is there's there's not much uniform on them. Although it, it probably would be easier <laughs> if there was more uniform because I could just do it all green, but uh, it's not going to make much of a difference. So we got the next guy. And again, we're just going to, you know, quickly, rapidly do this, uh, do his flesh. Uh, like that. I don't know if you saw me. I did add a little more paint because the watered down paint had kind of run out. So, and this, this is probably a little bit thicker than what I was using. One of the things you can see though is when you prime in black, you kind of get the natural shading like around the arms and the elbows and things like that. If you prime in white or even gray, it's going to be very uh, unforgiving if you don't cover an entire area. You're going to have to keep going back over it a lot. Black, you can leave a lot of it un uncovered. And it will, like the little crevices will make it look like shadows or whatever. So now we're just taking up another one. We're going to do his quick second coat. 
So whenever you hear people say, you know, two or three coats, uh, to me, that's just exactly what I'm doing. As soon as one dries, I, I, I go or pick it back up and put a coat on it. And then while that one's drying, I pick up the other one and put a coat on it. And then uh, pretty much I'm done other than if I throw a wash on it. But for the purposes of this, I don't know if I'm going to put a wash on during the video or not. So that's just about everybody's flesh. What'll happen now is that'll dry and it'll adhere to their skin, meaning it will it will cling and it will make sure, you know, it will make sure all the detail comes back out. Which is why it's good to use a good paint. Because otherwise it won't cling to the skin. It will just dry right wherever you lay it and blotch up. But these paints like GW, Vallejo, uh, Army Painter. Those paints will actually adhere, so when they dry, they will they will shrink and fill in those details. So what we're doing now is the hat. I'm not sure if you can see me. Unfortunately, I can't control the camera, but I'm just doing under the brim and top of the brim. And for the hat, we're using that, uh, what was this called? The Beige World War II. Their hats are a little bit lighter green than their their uh, trousers so again we're just going to do this guy's hat these actually you probably can get away with one coat you don't really need two thin coats at all one coat is fine you just want to make sure you got a decent enough brush to get around there uh, you're probably going to get a little bit on the face uh, I would just leave that until uh, it dries and then paint over it. Otherwise, you might smear it and then it gets to be a little more difficult to clean it up again. So we're going to do the third hat. I mean, really, we're about 50% finished with these guys now. Uh, this is a set my daughter got me for Christmas. So I was actually pretty, pretty pleased to get them. I had just put them on my Amazon wish list. So that worked out. We're going to do the trousers with some of this Russian. I prefer if I had American green or U.S. olive drab, but I think I'm out. So we'll, we'll try this Russian green, which the Russian green is a little bit darker than the American olive drab. Uh, yeah, so we will see. It works though, especially once you put the uh, once you put a wash over it, you won't really know the difference. So uh, I'm not trying to turn this into a painting video, but I'm just gonna give you guys just a quick session. And just kind of show you how I knock stuff like this out. Don't fool around with it. So we are getting his slacks done. And this is coming, coming along as fast as you can expect. He's, I'm trying not to get much on the hands and boots and things because I don't really feel like going over it. Uh, Lately, I've actually started with a lot of my miniatures painting the flesh last because of this, but either way, you either wind up having to go back and clean up the pants or go back and clean up the flesh. Uh, so, I mean, I guess it's just your preference which one you want to clean up. Uh, sometimes it is easier to cover the flesh, to cover the pants back up if you get flesh on them than to cover up the flesh, you know, if you get these... Uh, darker colors or stronger colors but so there he is you can already see he's already pretty much looking like he's out in the bush and then we do the other guys slacks and if you if you're inclined to I would definitely maybe dry brush these 
uh, you know, with them being out humping in the bush or whatever, that would kind of be expected that these would be faded, which is what dry brushing does. It gives you a faded look to the clothing or material. I will not be able to dry brush these because they won't be that dry by the time we finish what we're doing. Remember, this is our second of three colors that we are working with. So this guy, as you can see, he's he's got two colors. We're going to do this guy who's holding a shell, which I will need to get a separate color for later. Uh, well, I guess I could do it green, too. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to go look at the... I'll look at the picture online and see what color they did theirs. But we're almost done with him as well. And again, that black that black primer basically just gives us a lot of shading and shadows. Right? Even when you don't get 100% coverage. So his green is on there. And now we're going to go back to the first one. We are going to take out the uh, flat earth. We're going to put some of that on the palette. We are going to put some on the boots. That's his boots. And we just get in there. Do the second one right there. I don't know, this might be a little bit darker than the color they show online for the boots, but I'm not going to worry about it. I think it'll do. Uh, Uh, right there and this is just an artillery crew so I mean you're not going to be really playing with these moving them around the board or anything that's going to really where you're gonna need to make sure that you know their boots look good you know if you're doing paratroopers or SAS or something like that commandos then yeah you probably would want to do a good job like that make sure the colors are you know they look close to what they would have been wearing you don't have some odd color sticking out on the miniature but for these guys you know it won't make a difference and then after i put the uh, wash on some agrax earth shade it'll blend everything in together and it won't it won't be noticeable at all okay so really, at this point, you're pretty much done with these dudes. I mean, you could go back over to Flesh again. You could, uh, you know, I'm probably going to paint in just a quick little belt up around here using that same brown. Again, you don't have to do a belt and all this stuff. That's, that's totally extra. Right, because once I do this belt, I'm going to have to go back and clean up both the flesh and the pants now. But, I'd rather do the belt just to have it stand out to add that little bit of extra detail. So, because I, I can see it's noticeable in the sculpt, so we'll do this belt. And this this brown kind of has a leather look to it. Okay, so this guy's arm has really lost a lot of its flesh. Probably because I was handling him too much and he wasn't all the way dry. So I am now going to go back over his flesh and fill in any of those areas that I hit and clean him up real good. So that all he needs is his wash. I'm going to go back over his slacks. 
get those areas that I did too much belt clean him up equally as good and this guy is ready for his primer I mean for his wash well he's almost ready I got a little flesh on the slacks here so the next guy we're gonna clean up his slacks he got real his slacks got real bad so as a matter of fact we're probably gonna have to take some of that off like I don't know if you can see that all up in his waist that brown in there so I'm just gonna stick my brush in here and glob some of that up then I'm gonna put some paint on here and go in there uh, the way he's holding this little cartridge is what really messed me up and then we're gonna do his flesh because he got a little of that belt color on his flesh too so this is just kind of a cleanup phase which really takes no time. It's just, you look where you messed up and you go clean it up. Same thing with this guy. Flush. And actually it, it works as really a third coat. So if you, if you know you're gonna need to put three coats on, you can save that last one as part of your cleanup. I really didn't get much on his pants at all. So just a little touch or smidge in there. Now, we could actually do like a little rim around his hat. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I, I don't really know if that would look right. But there we go. So put a little better light on here. If I can show you these guys. So, uh, well, that's one of them. This is one of them. This camera doesn't want to focus right now. And this is one of them. And let's see, I think this is a little brighter. So, and that's the three of them. And then that's it. I'll put a wash on them uh, probably in about 15 or 20 minutes. And then uh, the only thing left will be to finish their 25 pounder gun. And this base, I'm simply going to dry brush on some uh, earth color, maybe some sand or some uh, mud or brown. But I'll show you guys when we're done with everything. Thanks. Hey everybody, we'll get back to the show in a minute. But I wanted to show you this because I had some initial footage on it that didn't get saved. But this is one of those pieces, I don't know if you've ever went to a thrift store or walked by a garbage can and looked at something and really thought, you know what, I might be able to do something with that. Yeah, that's what I thought when I saw this. So hang around to see, you know, exactly uh, what I'm able to make out of this. All right, let's get back to the build. Hey, just a quick check-in to show you guys the progress we've made so far so not really much I decided to uh, run this uh, insulation foam through the middle and divide it off I, I didn't want to go with just the long corridor like in the uh, like in the map or not the map but in the picture from the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen because I just thought that would be kind of bland just to have it as a long hallway so instead I've decided to kind of section it off into rooms you can see here I've added some brickwork and that was just to give it a little character I'm not exactly sure uh, how much more I'm gonna add what I'm thinking of doing is adding 
maybe a brick bricking off this back this whole back wall to kind of give that in in uh, look of brick. I, I do want to add some wallpaper elements, so I don't want to get too crazy with the bricks. Now, what might not be obvious to you is I have also laid down two MDF boards on the bottom of this. So this that gives it a lot of weight and stability, and I can also use those boards to lay down uh, some tiles if I decide to do go with some uh, tiles. I'm thinking of going by the store today and picking up some samples. Now, <clears throat> I'm trying to make up my mind at this point whether I am going to... Uh, spray paint everything black to give me a base to work with or whether I'm going to keep adding more elements and then see whether I need to spray paint at all uh, because obviously if I want to do the wallpaper and stuff then I need to spray paint it now uh, same thing with adding something to the floor my original idea with the MDF was I was going to coat it in a uh, stain a wood stain but unfortunately mdf is not wood and it basically soaked up the stain which you can see here it soaked it all up and none of it stuck so i'm not going to be able to stain that at least not with a real stain i might be able to use some of my hobby paints i haven't tried that or tested it yet uh so if i could do that then that would actually be great and I really wouldn't, uh, if, if I went that way, I wouldn't have to prime it at all. So that's why I'm holding back on priming it. I've got some door elements I found here. So I'm hoping to work them in somewhere. Uh, so that's basically as far as I've gotten for now. But uh, we will see you guys in the next update. Okay, so we are back with the Australian 25 pounder crew and as you can see I have finished the 25 pounder and the Australian so let's take a look at them first uh, I did wind up going back and doing the hats uh, Just because I thought it would work. I also did uh, Kind of the dressing on the boots So that's one these are the other two. I didn't do any highlights on the flesh, which I normally don't do. I know a lot of people like to do a lot of highlight and kind of give them the cartoon character look. I prefer to leave them like this other than the wash, which puts a natural highlight on them, depending on where it falls or recedes at. So and this is the rest of the crew. And then finally, the thing you haven't seen anything of is the gun. And this was basically just uh, Army Painter Green. And then I put a green wash over it. Uh, and then I did the tires black. So I kept it simple. I mean, I could have did some chipping effects and things like that on here. I might go back and do that. Normally, I just take some gray and sponge it on there in spots. Uh, I like the base. It can't come off. So I tried to give it a sandy color. Assuming if you're working a 25 pounder, you'd probably be located somewhere on the beach so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed that that took me maybe an afternoon all together if that long hey everybody so we're back uh the biggest thing that's changed since i guess you guys were last here is i have added uh basically some spackling to the wall areas to give the impression of drywall which of course back then wouldn't have been called drywall it just would have been uh, plaster or mud and I could actually paint this up so I haven't decided what color I'm gonna paint it yet uh, I've got a few other ideas I've added these doors from some old games workshop uh, doors that I've kept over the years for this occasion I put one there so you kind of got doors at opposite ends which hopefully that'll come in handy in a scenario oh yeah and I'm trying to turn this without chipping stuff I did the back wall 
so the entire back wall has been bricked off this side is more uniform this side I kind of intentionally made it uh, ununiform with some of the bricks going vertical as opposed to horizontal just to maybe look like this wall had been rebuilt I've also added this kind of uh, ad hoc cellar so I want this to represent kind of a cellar compartment in the uh, in the, the building maybe it goes down into a dungeon maybe it's a safe room who knows but there's a door that leads down to that cellar and so you can see now we've got the making of these two rooms and really the only thing left is to do the floor I still haven't quite settled on what I'm going to do with the floor, whether I'm going to paint it or I was even thinking of trying to tile it, maybe creating my own like brick pavement type of tiles. Uh, I know some crafters have done videos on that or uh, I mean they didn't have carpet back then so you wouldn't put carpet down. Although I could get some type of uh, faux fur. Now how much of that would be in one room would probably not be a lot so that that might be something more to add later is maybe put some faux fur in an area that sounds kind of cool uh, but then so basically I have the floor I have whatever I'm going to do with the walls uh, and then other than that I think it would just be some painting and, and adding some items in here so I'm actually pleased with how it came out. I can tell you now it's probably not going to wind up being the library from the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. As you can see, that just has kind of went out the window. I mean, that's one thing about doing these terrain projects. You kind of get going, and the more you do, the more you kind of decide to do something different or turn a corner, and you really can't come back again. So, yeah, the, the library project is probably... Uh, you know going to have to wait for another day again but I definitely like the way this is turning out and I'm really curious as to what it's going to wind up being right now it gives me more of an impression of a large inn maybe a large estate uh, you know maybe even a bottom floor or a top floor in a castle or something but we will see So now we're going to take a look at my Dead Zone 2nd Edition uh, Army. These are the Forge Fathers. I believe that's what they're called in Dead Zone 2nd Edition. Uh, I've been painting these off and on probably for a month. I just haven't mentioned it on the channel. But I think I've kind of finished them. So I'm going to put them up in batches. Uh, I went with the green for the armor. I didn't want to put any of the orange or the other colors that they had in there. I kind of went with that off. That's like an off gray, a bluish gray for their weapons. Uh, I mean, with these, I really, really wanted to keep keep it simple. Which I kind of do with, with space or sci-fi models anyway. Uh, but with Dead Zone in particular, I mean... These models are designed to get on the table, not really to use in a lot of other situations. Like, they're not going to be characters in any type of the games I play or anything. They're just, you know, they're just basic models that you can get into a game. So I'm really interested to see how the Forge Fathers do play in a Dead Zone 2nd uh, Edition mission. So I will definitely be... Uh, be trying to put together a scenario that's going to bring them in. Let me show you the other units from the box. All right, so next up are my Enforcer Scouts. And I think I had mistakenly, when I assembled these and did a video, called them Rebs. And somebody corrected me and told me that these are actually part of the Enforcer and these are like their Scouts. So I appreciate that because it influenced my color scheme and my painting. So... Here are two of them. I kind of did my best version of a camel pattern on their slacks. They basically are still have the enforcer armor. 
the weaponry and loadout, you know, I'll take a look at that when it's time to uh, get their stack cards. I like these, though. I mean, there's a couple. I can't tell if they're male or female. Like, this guy or girl, I do not know. I mean, I would... I don't know. I, I think it's a female, but I can't be sure. Uh, same thing with this one here. You know, I don't know if it's a female or not. I mean, the dude has a pretty big bicep. So I'm assuming it's a guy with the armor on the chest. I can't tell. You know, I can't tell whether or not there's obviously breast under there or something. Uh, again, this guy's got a huge bicep. So... I'm, I mean, I, I, I'm assuming they're, they're dudes, but they could be females. I don't know, but I do like the unit. So I'm not exactly sure what it adds when in gameplay, as far as I'm assuming they would get better movement, but I will take a look at that. I mean, they could obviously get two items in the game, which might come up in the scenario. So let me show you the last unit from the second edition box. Okay, and these are the enforcers that came with the box. Now, I've already got a, a basic set of enforcers that I showed in a, a playtest. So what I decided to do with this, this, uh, this unit in the game was I wanted to create like an enforcer kill team, right? Or more of a black ops type of feel. So I tried to give them this kind of black and gray camo pattern, you know, something that would confuse the uh, imaging retinas on, on most people's imaging devices off world. So that's kind of what I went for with the theme with these guys. It actually turned out pretty good. I mean, it's obviously not perfect. I didn't use the uh, bone color on the back. I just wanted that on the front. So like sort of if they're running towards you. It would confuse you. You know, maybe the colors would start to uh, collide escape with each other. Right? And then they've got their little uh, automaton dog. So I'm really interested in seeing how the dog plays in the game. He's got that huge weapon. And I'm sure he's pretty fast. So that could be, that could be a big influence in the way the game plays. <clears throat> but yeah, so I'm going to use these guys as kind of my kill team. Right, if the board of directors sends these guys to your planet, uh, nobody's getting off that planet. Not even civilians. Right, that that's 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 an operation where they have been sent to uh, basically purge or exterminate everything and clean it up. So we're gonna basically have them, and then maybe the scouts and uh, the the original enforcers go against the forge fathers and kind of tangentially the plague right the forge fathers are they're not going to be working with the plague or helping the plague or the infested but they're going to be kind of on the same side versus the enforcers who are basically going to be going back to the uh colony or the outpost uh to clean it up to basically disinfect it uh because there's another corporation interested in purchasing uh, the infrastructure. And the board of directors has promised to clean it up as part of the sale. So they can't, they can't close on that deal until the enforcers and this kill team go and clean it up. Because obviously they went back and reported that the plague was there. Not to mention the stuff that got left behind. Right? Which is why the Forge Fathers are showing up. Because the Forge Fathers have gotten word that, you know, these uh, munitions and medical supplies and everything. You, if, if you haven't seen the battle report, go watch it. But everything that was in that battle report that was not recovered, they could definitely use. So keep your eye out for that. So this is the current state of my weekend build which i think i'm going to wind up calling a tavern build uh i'm not sure if you can see it so i'll try to move around the different sides of it but uh 
it totally did not come out the way I expected. You know, as I got involved with it, I kind of just started ad-libbing, so to speak. I will point out a few elements. So the main thing you will notice is the hardwood floors. And this was done with some spare balsa wood that I found. So I glued the balsa wood down and then I put the varnish over there and it actually took, unlike when I tried to put the varnish on the MDF. These are just some wooden blocks, which I kind of did to represent, kind of I wanted them to look like pillars. These are some spare foreground parts. Uh, the brickwork has been painted and dry brushed. I gave the floor, I finally decided to do the floor up in just kind of a mud or dirt look, right? To just look like the premises uh, just used a regular, you know, mud or clay or dirt look. The walls were all painted in a flat earth color again. So after a while, I just decided I wanted this to kind of look like an old comfortable uh an old comfortable inn or tavern now it really doesn't look like much and if you're looking at the white stuff from the uh, plaster i did that on purpose so i basically took a uh paper towel and rubbed it in order to get that look like the wall had been used you know it's an old lived in tavern which is why some of the areas i i haven't repainted because i do want to give the look that this is going to be an old comfortable tavern now you're really not going to be able to appreciate any of this until we get some scenery in here which hopefully i will be able to do later today and then i will do some pictures of it with the scenery which i think is going to make a big difference i have some good ideas for scenery we still have my latch area here i'm going to put a wash over that that's just kind of a yellow wood color so i'll probably put a wash on that to darken that up a little bit uh, again, you can see where I rubbed off some of the wall here to look like, you know, the place has been used and lived in. And to give you a pullout look, that's the entire board. Now that basically, I did this over a weekend. I think I started it on Friday. Today is Monday. Uh, it never turned into the library. I mean, from the very beginning, I just, I kind of got to fill in the, the whole library floor was well, not going to work out uh, probably once I added the bricks and partitioned it off but I do like it because what you can do is you can play a game where you have a building and then when you enter the building you put everything on here which is a little more 3d than simply putting it on a, a gaming mat or a flip mat or something uh, I could actually extend the hardwood floor out by buying some more balsa wood I ran out but I could actually balsa wood this and balsa wood that because I, I cut this stuff to shape and then basically I would need maybe one two three more pieces of balsa wood maybe one and a half here that's a pretty big space and I could extend the hardwood floors out I'm very tempted to do that even though I do like kind of the you know the earthy muddy kind of feel to it in that part of the tavern you know maybe that's the common part of the tavern maybe this is the more upscale part maybe it's not a tavern maybe it's a a, a soldier's barracks or uh maybe it's a you know a government building so i don't know but i could extend the hardwood floors out which i think would really change the look a lot if the whole thing had hardwood floors, I'm just not sure if that would maybe make it a little too, uh, uh, incongruous. I mean, you'd have kind of the real expensive looking hardwood floors with the, the wide and double walls and brick, but I haven't made up my mind. I probably will buy some more MDF today and then I will think about it. I mean, I'm assuming if I buy it, I'm going to use it. Uh, and it wouldn't be that hard and it wouldn't take that long and I think it would look a lot different not necessarily better but it would look a lot different because uh, then it would pretty much be an upscale facility uh, 
These doors, I still need to paint the metal around there. That's why they're not showing up well. Uh, these window things, you know, I could maybe paint them to look like they were looking outside, like they were blue or something. But I'm not really inclined to do that. You know, I may, I may see if I can find something to stick in there, like an image or something. I don't know. I think they're fine like they are for what it is. But there you go, guys. I mean, hopefully this at least showed you that, uh, I mean, this started as a cardboard box. So it just shows you that, hey, if you, you know, if you have an idea for something, kick around and, you know, fool around with it. You know, at the end, you're going to get something. It may not be exactly what you want, but you will get something and something you can probably use. Okay, that's it for now. And in case you had thought I forgot, we return to the mountain top. And as you can see, it's been painted. I've added some weathering effects. We have some Forge Fathers making their way through here. And there's even some Edelweiss growing up there. Maybe that's what the Forge Fathers are going to retrieve, the Edelweiss. But anyway, I thought this came out pretty good. It's just basically I did some black. I went over that with some uh, gray and then some white. So I think that whole piece came out real nice. We're going to get a kind of a further out look there so you can see. We've got some more inner in here. These guys are making their way up here. And then they're going to come around there and join the others in trying to retrieve some Edelweiss. So that was pretty simple, pretty quick. I like it because it is flat on the back, so I can actually push this against a wall or another structure. And it can basically take up very little room, but you can really get some playing. I also like the fact that it goes up in levels. So unlike a lot of the terrain that takes up space, uh, horizontally on your table this adds some vertical some vertical depth to your table so I hope you guys enjoyed that back to the rest of the show oh man I wish I could get some Edelweiss And now we return to the Egyptian uh, city. So as you can see, I've gotten a layer of paint over it. Uh, there's a lot more I could do with this. I mean, obviously, I'm interested and I'm going to probably paint those. Uh, I might do the hieroglyphs on the door there as well as these images so all of that will probably get some type of gold or other colors but i just wanted to show you so far what it's got the big wall section is not done i ran out of spray paint so i kind of had to call it uh for this weekend just to kind of give you a side view the back is not painted so there's no need to take a look at the back but i mean this is actually a very very impressive structure so definitely could do some gaming i mean really i could just leave it like this and game with it just like this uh again i'm not exactly sure what uh what was the name of the product the toy i actually got this at a thrift store there you have uh kind of the three muses from my uh mythic battles pantheon game who has been painted up uh, yeah so that's kind of what it looks like for now um, uh, I will probably keep working on this. So check out some other episodes to see what other progress I make with it and the rest of the structures. All right, later. So here we are, everybody. The, um, I guess I would say the final, uh, setup for the tavern which is at least that's what I'm calling it now so I'll try to take you guys through everything after I give you a good look 
So let's start with here, kind of the main room here. Right here we have kind of like his, uh, the, he has some kind of observatory or telescope in there. There's like a grandfather clock. These are actually portions of a map. So I basically took the map, cut it into different portions, and then pasted them onto these uh, MDF. And these are actually leftover frames from some MDF kits I had from foreground. This is actually a map of the overland, so they have this table that they can view the map. This is obviously a carpet of rock. We have a piano, because yes, in my world, they have pianos. We have a wall mural. Again, that's left over from foreground. We have a bookshelf, bookshelf which is actually hiding an exit door so then we come into like the main dining room we have our dining room table a bearskin rug a smaller side table so we leave that room and kind of come into the back hall you know maybe the private area we have some uh, tapestries on the wall some more books a chair a little chest, the little cellar hatch, and then, yeah, long stretch. There is a kind of a stone fireplace there, and a bed and another rug. Now, if you're wondering where most of these pieces like this and this and all of these came from, these are actually pieces from a board game uh, that I've had for quite some time. But I thought if I ever repainted them, they'd be good for some miniature stuff. And so I finally got to do that with this project. I forgot the name of the board game, but I'll try to think about it and look it up if I can remember. But I think it, it was some kind of haunted house board game or haunted mansion i think it was mystery mansion was the name of it but uh they had like this furniture and walls and all of these different things you could buy there was another one which was like a shopping one i think and i took some pieces out of there so most of these are all from different board games that were on the market at one time none of them are available for sale but i kind of picked them up thrifting back when i used to thrift so the cool thing I like about this though is, you know, I could easily change this layout. You know, and I may do that and show that to you guys later, some different changes in layout. I think one thing I forgot to mention is I did extend the uh, hardwood floor into the rest of these rooms. I did make it to the hardware store. I got some more uh, balsa wood, laid it down, and stained it. And so I actually like the way that came out. I mean, and even the fact that you have, you can see these scenes and stuff really makes it look legitimate. That makes it look more original. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project, kind of my start to finish. You know, I don't do this often, but sometimes I just get in the mood and I want to do a build, something that, uh, you know, I'm going to be able to remember or look back on later. And so that's what we have here. Take care, everybody. God bless. So there you go, everybody. That was a, a custom build of what started out as a library and ended up becoming a tavern. Uh, I guess it just happens like that sometime. This took me probably a weekend, maybe a little bit beyond the weekend, uh, kind of laying the MDF, cutting the board, the painting, uh, the design and all of that but it was actually a very interesting and enjoyable project uh, I'm going to show you guys some slides of some of the interior to give you a little bit of close-up detail but I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, after painting episode uh, hang around for the next one because you never know what uh, I'm going to be up to when I'm after painting take care guys bye bye and god bless